Hey everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. Don't forget to check out the description box for more intriguing topics that you won't want to miss. So, without further ado, fasten your pants together and let's get started. In 2014, a startup called Bite Labs made headlines when it claimed to be able to make test tube meat from celebrity tissue samples. The company's goal was to provoke discussion and debate around topics of bioethics and celebrity culture. According to Bite Labs' website, the process would involve taking a sample of tissue containing myosatellite cells from a celebrity during a biopsy. Myosatellite cells is the cells that help repair and regrow damaged muscle. These cells would then be multiplied in a lab, using a medium that acts as artificial blood to grow muscle. Once the cells matured, they would be ground and mixed with different kinds of meat, spices, fats, and oils for flavor, using one of the company's time-honored recipes for the creation of fine cured meats. The resulting product would then be packaged and distributed. While well, the idea of using celebrity tissue samples to create meat was undoubtedly controversial, it seems to have inspired some dark imaginings in the popular culture. For example, in Katy Perry's music video for Bon Appetit, chefs are shown preparing the singer herself as if she were a piece of meat, including boiling her in a large pot and garnishing her with carrots. The video also features a pie filled with dismembered body parts. Wow. What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give it a like if you've learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstandings. Thank you. Actually, the point of the video this time is this. This is a summary of a long article written by Vigilant Citizens about the Netflix film, Blonde. If you want more details, please visit the website. Blonde, the movie depicting the life of Marilyn Monroe, has received negative reviews for its depiction of excessive cruelty and dehumanization. This led to the film being nominated for two Razzie Awards, Worst Picture and Worst Director. However, Ana de Armas, who plays Marilyn, has been nominated for an Oscar for Best Actress, which raises the question of whether a good performance can redeem a bad movie. De Armas' acting, which includes frequent crying, has been praised by some. However, the excessive crying can be overwhelming to watch, and raises concerns about the emotional toll it may have taken on the actress. Moreover, the movie has been criticized for its portrayal of Marilyn's life as torture, with the focus being on De Arma's suffering, rather than on her character's life. This has led some viewers to feel like sadistic voyeurs. Despite the movie's negative reviews, it accurately reflects Hollywood's perverted and obsessive relationship with Marilyn Monroe. Monroe is viewed as the ultimate industry slave prototype, and Blonde depicts Ana de Armas' character undergoing Marilyn Monroe programming. According to Fritz Springmeier, Marilyn Monroe was a monarch mind control slave, controlled by the Hollywood elite since infancy. Her life was tightly controlled by handlers, and she was a presidential model, programmed to service powerful people. Blonde, a movie about her life, depicts some of these hidden facts, but it turns her suffering into entertainment, cementing her legacy as an industry slave prototype. Nearly all modern kitten celebrities follow Monroe's script, and Ana de Armas went all in. Ana de Armas may have been nominated for an Oscar for her role as Marilyn Monroe in Blonde, but her Cuban accent makes her too distinguishable from Monroe. 
The film depicts Monroe's life as a Hollywood MK slave, including her being <laughs> by a producer and forced to have an <laughs> Scenes that should be iconic, such as Monroe's flying skirt moment, are tainted with misery. Even scenes of Monroe's fans are depicted as menacing and possessed. There is no joy in this movie, only suffering. In the movie, there is a scene where Marilyn Monroe talks to her unborn baby while cutting roses in her garden. She reveals that it's the same baby she had previously a The scene was criticized for being anti a Yup, amid all of the awfulness on display in that movie, these people find a way to get offended by a mother talking to her unborn child. By doing so, they're completely missing the true meaning of these scenes. Soon after, Marilyn falls and the baby. After falling down, Marilyn's rose pattern dress gets bloody. After losing her baby, Marilyn is in a room that's completely wallpapered with roses. Also, her mirrors are broken, a classic symbol representing the fragmenting of an MK slave's persona after trauma. The omnipresence of red roses in these scenes gives the death of this baby a ritualistic dimension. The subtle message is. It was less an accident than it was a blood sacrifice. After the loss of the baby, Monroe is so traumatized and dissociative that she doesn't recognize her husband, as illustrated by the creepy blur effect on his face. To keep the highly depressed and unstable Monroe productive, she's drugged by her handlers on movie sets. Meanwhile, her makeup artist Alan Whitey Snyder tells her that he'll conjure Marilyn within the hour. That means that he'll trigger her alter persona. Then, things manage to get worse and worse. Although Blonde is said to be a fictionalized version of Marilyn's story, it is possibly the most accurate depiction of her actual life ever seen on film. Through subtle and not-so-subtle scenes, Blonde hints at the forces that controlled Monroe's entire life and the trauma she was subjected to as an industry slave. With that being said, the movie cannot be described as informative or eye-opening. It is rather exploitative. It is not about exposing the dark side of the industry, it is more about watching Anna de Armas, disguised as Marilyn, reliving the traumas and humiliations of Marilyn. Indeed, in the span of three hours, we see Anna de Armas get <laughs> beaten, humiliated, and everything in between. The movie puts on the suffering on screen, but explains none of it. It doesn't want to wake us up, it wants us to feel some of that sadistic satisfaction these people feel when they subject stars to outright torture. In a strange way, Ana de Armas was subjected to actual trauma. And, for this sacrifice, she got rewarded by the all-important Academy with an Oscar nomination. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.